Simpson bringing you in the first edition of the Summer Session on Media Over IT, brought to you by Ames and the VSF. With me today is Mike Cronk, the VP of Advanced Technology at Grass Valley and Chairman of the Board at Ames. Um, Mike is going to be talking about the Media Over IT revolution. Uh, welcome, Mike. Thank you, Wes. Uh, very happy to kick off uh, these summer sessions. Uh, you know that, uh, of course, unfortunately, with, with, with COVID, uh, we weren't, we were not able to get together at NAB. Yeah. But we're really thrilled to uh, have this uh, opportunity to bring to you some very important updates on the uh, evolution and, and movement towards uh, IP-based systems in our industry. Well, we're really looking forward to it. So let's, let's dig in. Yeah, so I just want to thank uh, it's, Ames and VSF are very proud to have to to bring this to you, uh, and we've we've done that with with a number of of of, of sponsors that we couldn't uh, do do without. So uh, I just want to give you some uh, background on the summer sessions as as we start. So the focus of these summer sessions is media over IP and, and edu education, and let's talk about the format of of these. There are going to be a series of recorded presentations uh, for that educational thing. There's going to be a new session available each week for, for replay, and it's going to feature industry experts that have been involved in the development of the media over uh, IP workflows and the implementations of, of use cases and, and development of supporting technology. So we're really excited uh, about these summer sessions and think they're going to be very valuable. I want to just give a shout out to uh, the, the many sponsors, uh, both media publications you see on the bottom row uh, and, and some really key organizations in our industry. Um, what we've done with Media Over IP over the last four years in, in building consensus and a coalition on a standards based and open uh, specification approach to this couldn't have been done by one organization. And it was really the collaborative efforts of, of these types of groups that, that made a difference. So, so our, we look, our thanks goes out to everyone. I wanted to start by just explaining a little bit about uh, AIMS. It's the Alliance for IP Media Solutions. It was formed in December of 2015 at a time when there was no clear consensus in the industry and certainly not a consensus around uh, standards and open specifications. So it's a not-for-profit not alliance. It's open to all. We have about 100 members now. It's funded by those members solely on, on dues. And, and really, it's all about one common goal. And so what is that goal? It's to foster the adoption of one set of common ubiquitous, meaning everywhere, every country, standards-based protocols for interoperability over IP in the media and entertainment industry. Uh, and that really unites us. And, and we use the, the proceeds from our member dues to, to help uh, achieve that goal, be it for things like the IP showcase, summer sessions like, like this, and a number of other activities. And, and with that goal, it was really important to focus on what is, is the roadmap? What are the series of, of recommended standards and open specifications for the industry? And this is a roadmap that, that we periodically update. The latest update uh, that we published was from October of last year. Uh, and we started out with SMPTE 21, uh, excuse me, SMPTE 2022-6 and AS67 as, as core standards, which are still viable and on, on the roadmap. Uh, and then we uh, were very involved uh, in, in working with, with SMPTE uh, in terms of the uh, SMPTE ST2110 standards. And this is really kind of the go forward uh, key standards for uh, the broadcast media entertainment industry along with uh, AS67. And, and so these are things like 2110-10, uh, 20, 21, 30, dash 31, and dash 40, uh, where I think you're gonna hear a lot more about these in, in the other sessions. So I won't go into to detail, but they really form the core basis of how uh, video is transmitted over IP in, in professional uh, broadcast uh, situations. Uh, and then a really exciting development, which really increases the level of interoperability and systemization is a collection of specifications under the heading, uh, the JTNM TR1001-1. So JTNM is a joint task force of network media uh, comprised of AMWA, EDU, uh, SMPTE, and VSF. Uh, and they've done some, some great collaborative work. And, and this really goes beyond the transport layer 
to how do systems get configured uh, for multi in a multi vendor situation. And I think this is a huge help uh, for the industry in the adoption of, of IP. So um, one of the things is in terms of what, what AIMS does with these standards is, is we don't make them. Uh, organizations like SIMPTI, AES, and AMWA do, do the heavy lifting on, on, the, on the technical work. Um, and so what, what AIMS does though is with those members uh, re review those standards is involved in, in the same members that are in AIMS are also su supporting these, but we, we have a, an opportunity to deliberate and discuss, do these make sense for the broadcast industries? Are they something that we can endorse, put on our roadmap as, as a recommendation going forward? And because Ames has 100 members, including some key broadcasters, um, it, it really uh, provides a, a level of, of, of credibility and endorsement, if, if you will, for these standards. And so we, we typically do that with things that are published or very close to being published is when we get them on the roadmap so that we know what we're, we're voting on and endorsing. And, and this is the, the list of those, those standards that, that are on the AIMS roadmap and, and have been approved. And you see most of these are already published uh, and, and approved, or all of them actually. So a question to ask, because AIMS started in 2015, uh, the December of 2015, is, is the mission complete? Um, I think largely that, that some of the key standards and specifications for media over IP are in, in place. Now you'll see uh, further on in this presentation that there's some, some enhancements that, that we're adding to make uh, even more robust systems for media over IP. So I think there's some work to be done there, but, but there's a, a big part of that mission that's been accomplished. However, there's a lot to do in a number of other areas. So education, for example, is, is huge. Uh, the adoption of uh, media over IP has been great with, with, with 2110. Uh, the, the number of sites is continually increasing. But like any transition, for example, like going from SD to HD, that's a multi-year um, endeavor, even a decade endeavor, as, as people renew their plants uh, with, with long-term CapEx uh, purchases. And so understanding uh, education is important, enhancing implementation. So uh, to me, that, that means uh, things like simplification, making it easier and easier to put together a system uh, and that's a lot of what's things like the JT and MTR 1001 do. So there's, there's in, in enhancements to that that we'll talk about as well. Um, the other new frontier uh, for AIMS and a standards-based approach is if we look at broadcast kind of professional media and entertainment versus uh, the professional a AV industry or pro AV industry, um, that, that industry has a lot of the same challenges and, and use case, but, but some specific needs. Uh, and really in that uh, area, there isn't a, a clear standard that follows ISO process that people can download and read and implement. Uh, there's some proprietary uh, approaches uh, and it really uh, begs for, for, for that market to really flourish a, a standards-based approach to Pro-AV. And, and so that's an area um, where, where there's an opportunity to bring some of the work uh, that's done in the, in the professional media and entertainment industry, broadcast industry, over to an entirely uh, different but adjacent uh, industry. So these are examples, right? So in terms of education, uh, some of the things that we're doing is this very, these summer sessions are as a key example. Uh, AIMS uh, continues to develop white papers and presentations that you can find on our, our website. Uh, and the IP showcase um, has, first of all, when, when we have a, a, a physical trade show, we're, we're at them. Um, but there's a lot of great uh, presentations and videos uh, that are online that, that you can still access today to, to help uh, self-educate. self, self -educate. Uh, And then the sponsor organizations, some of which are offering uh, various training and things like Simply, Simply 2110, have a wealth of knowledge and, and are great resources uh, in order to uh, to uh, help you know further your education, and so um, in terms of enhancing the implementation, though uh, the rollout of TR one thousand one dash one is is happening. That document's uh, been around for about a year in terms of its being ratified. Um, with the uh, JTM tested events that we do prior to uh, the major trade shows NAB and IBC, um, we're doing uh, badging and testing in in these areas. And this has been very helpful. And in fact, we, we did some of this remotely even um, uh, because of COVID. 
uh, to continue continue the effort so that that multiple vendors can put systems together and and, and verify that that these these standards uh, work and are, and are and are valid. And so that that effort will will continue. Uh, and then there's some new things, uh, things like ISO six, ISO seven, and ISO eight are things that aren't on the AMS uh, roadmap yet, but but are being worked. Uh, ISO 7 uh, gives you the ability to uh, do things like, for example, a tally in a common way over IP. And ISO 8 is is very helpful for doing things like audio breakaway and, and mapping audio channels and, and complex configurations for, for broadcast. Uh, and then, of course, uh, security is something that as, as we move to IP, and even in our daily lives, is becoming more and more uh, important as, as the world gets more connected. And so uh, there are specifications work being worked on those areas to, to enhance security. So all of this enhances the implementation, simplifies, and enables a common way to work, not just at the transport layer, but, but higher up in, in this protocol stack. So the other area of effort I mentioned was Pro-AV. And so uh, we created this, this terminology. It's a, it's a branding of the, the, the standards uh, being developed and, and some that are developed uh, called IPMX. So IP Media Experience is what it stands for. And this is the, a nomenclature, if you will, for the collection of standards and open specifications that are being recommended for the pro AV market. Uh, Ames has about 100 members, and I would say there's at least 25% uh, of those members that are extremely active in pro AV, some that are, that are uh, also interested in, and that really taken some great initiative um, to, to move, move into this area and, and, and propose something that, that, that really works for, for pro AV, and the response has been tremendous. So what is IPMX? It's a set of open standards specifications to enable the carriage of compressed and uncompressed video, audio, and data over IP networks. So some of the key standards in, in this, you'll recognize things like SMPTE 2110 10 and dash 20 and dash 22 uh, for, for compressed video. Um, it also uh, has specific provisions for things that the pro AV industry needs. So uh, control, I, how do I get you know USB through, through a system of, over IP, copy protection, connection management, and security uh, needs that are unique to Pro-AV. And, and Ames is, is, is partnering with multiple organizations to uh, develop uh, proposals and standards in these areas to, to enhance IPMX over time. So what's the purpose of IPMX? If you read this, if you look at the, the, the purpose of, of Ames that we shared, Earlier, it's it's very similar. It defines a one set of common ubiquitous open standards-based protocols for interoperability over IP uh, in the pro AV uh, industry. So that that's really the goal, um, and is an exciting area that I think is going to generate a, a lot of value and and uh, re really help uh, that industry to to flourish as as people can focus on once they have that standard on the other as aspects of of their their product architectures and and it pre presents more choice. Uh, for uh, the the customers in that in that industry. So this has just been a, a quick overview of some of the the key standards and 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 what's happening uh, in the industry. Uh, I look forward to to listening to many of these these sessions, uh, and I think I hope hopefully you will too. I think they'll be very educational. Um, Please check for fresh content each, each week. There will be something new up there every week. And I really hope that you enjoy the rest of the summer sessions. Well, thanks a lot, Mike. Really appreciate that. Uh, very informative. Um, I, I just had a question or two. Uh, first of all, you know, where do you see uh, the IP media market going? Is, is, is IP media technology really taking over the market or is it still got a lot of uh, climbing to do? Well, I think it's it's like any major uh, transition in broadcast. It, it happens over a, a, a decade rather than a you know a six month period or uh -huh. something like yeah. that. So um, I think we see just a steady increase of of systems that are IP based. Um, they have a lot of advantages in terms of scalability and format flexibility and the ability to remote uh, various resources. So some key business advantages. Um, and with things like JT and MTR one thousand one. Um, it's making systemization, uh, you know, much more simple. 
And, and so I think as, as both of those things happen, we're, we're seeing a, you know, a steady progress in that, that area that's not unlike the SD to HD transition. That one didn't happen overnight, even mm, though the yeah, vendors sure. had, had technology, but <laughs> you know, people have ongoing plants and it doesn't make sense to you know, use them through their, at least their amortization period. And then, and then you, you make a move. Uh, and so, so it, the, the uptake has been very positive. And the other you know, aspect of IP is I, IP really, once you're in IP, you, you've kind of got an on-ramp to get to other types of technologies like cloud and, and, and virtualization. So, so I think all of those uh, things are happening and, and there's a lot of reasons to, to move to IP. And, it, and it's uh, through the work of, of all the uh, organizations, including the, the uh, JTM organizations, uh, there's been a lot of prog progress, and it's getting uh, better and better. Great. So um, specifically on IPMX, that's kind of a new thing for maybe a lot of our audience. Uh, where, mm -hmm. where do we stand with that technology suite today? Yeah, I think um, IPMX is is very exciting, and there's and there's uh, vendors that are implementing to uh, IPMX as it exists today, uh, and I and I would kind of draw the analogy between say 2110 in, in 2017 versus wow. you know 2020. So 2110 and 2017, if, if my history book is right in my head, uh, was, was initially ratified, the, the, the key, you know, the dash 20s, the dash 30s, the dash 10s, um, and for system timing, you know, video and audio, and then ancillary data followed uh, fairly sh shortly. You, you could use the system based on those standards, but then we added, you know, Dash 22. Then we added uh, the, the, the AMWA, uh, ISO 4 and ISO 5 for connection management. And now we have JTNM tier 1001. So it, it becomes more robust over time. And so I think that's, you know, the Pro AV IPMX is, is kind of where uh, the broadcast studio was back in 2007. They're, they're drafting off those and they're adding more and more capabilities and so that's that's very exciting and it's it's to the point where like i said vendors vendors can implement and uh, i think we'll see the the fruits of that labor as we move forward yeah it sounds like there's a lot of things that need to be uh taken care of a little bit. mike i want to thank you very much i uh, really, really appreciate the, uh, your time today and uh hopefully... yeah thanks for getting me in the summer mood it was very festive Alright. Okay. Oh, well, you're on the East Coast, but... <laughs>